Before we get started this week, I recently heard that Tortoise Archives has decided to quit YouTube. Which is a real shame because he was one of the best Doctor Who YouTube channels out there. I really enjoyed his passion, his enthusiasm and all the interesting fun facts that he decided to provide about the world of Doctor Who. For whatever reason he's decided to quit, I wish him all the best. I hope he succeeds in whatever venture or avenue or alleyway he has decided to go down. Also this week on my channel I decided to review the Spider-Man Rapid Reload Blaster, whatever the heck that thing is, and also the pullback, classic pullback toy of Matilda from Robot Wars. If you like that sort of thing, or you know someone who likes that sort of thing, please do ask them to give it a watch, or indeed give it a watch yourself. Anyway, enough of the shameless self-promoting, let's review some Doctor Who. YouTube viewers and random Doctor Who fans, welcome along to my spoilerific review of the Empress of Mars. <laughs> no idea why I laughed there. Anyway, review, review. Visually, the episode didn't start off very well. We got some really terrible CGI with that NASA building. It looked like a PS1 cutscene. I did like, however, that the Doctor and his companions just so happened to be at NASA for no real discernible reason, and a twist of God Save the Queen written on the surface of Mars. Man, Martians really like the Sex Pistols. Who would have known? I also enjoyed seeing Bill remain a very clever character. She worked out that Mars had oxygen after seeing the fire. And be careful of removing your helmet there, Doctor. We know what happened last time. Wouldn't it have been hilarious had he just been instantly blinded again? And hang on a minute, so the TARDIS just suddenly decided to disappear during the middle of an adventure with Ice Warriors set in a confined space. This sounding a little bit Cold War to anyone. Mark Gatiss, you're ripping yourself off here. That's bad. I love it when Doctor Who gets, for lack of a better term, timey-wimey, and brings us an anachronistic storyline with British soldiers from the 1800s on Mars. It was a nice twist on the British Empire that they would claim Mars as a part of it, and that for once the humans are the invading aliens, which is something we rarely see with Doctor Who. I also caught the portrait of Queen Victoria, who looks exactly like the actress who portrayed her in Tooth and Claw, adding a nice bit of continuity. It was the soldiers' greed which led to their downfall, with them trying to claim some treasure, which resulted in the Ice Queen waking up, and parallels to that could be drawn to the British Empire's history. The design of the Ice Queen suit looked great, it was distinctly feminine, yet not to a point where it didn't fit in with the Ice Warrior designs. It also kind of reminded me of the Predator with the shape of the face, and especially the dreadlocks. The Ice Warrior compression weapons were also a unique way to kill people. Instead of a ray hitting someone and them just falling over, they got crushed into a ball. It was sickeningly effective. And the Ice Queen also said, Sleep no more, as her army was beginning to wake up. Look, Mr. Gatiss, you can reference it all you want. It's still going to be one of your worst episodes. Forget it. It was a bad idea. Move on. Sorry, I think I've got some sleep in my eye. The finale was also very refreshing, with the disgraced colonel finally showing some courage and killing Loveheart to save the Ice Queen. It made a change from an all-out war, or seeing all of the humans murdered. By joining the side of the Ice Warriors, the soldiers managed to positively influence them. And the cameo by Alpha Centauri was a great cherry on the cake! And maybe it was for the best that we just saw her eye, because her full outfit, let's just say, it looks a little bit 70s. And the ending kind of got me as well, with Nardole releasing Missy from the vault to pilot the TARDIS to get the Doctor off of Mars again. And the weirdest thing about it is, her concern did seem kind of genuine, making this one of the creepiest things Missy has ever done. The Empress of Mars gets a 9 out of 10. It inverted many classic Who cliches and dealt with themes of slavery and colonisation. The CGI may have been ropey at the start, but the Martian vistas looked gorgeous throughout the episode. And if this is to be Mark Gatiss' final episode of Doctor Who, it's good to know he went out on a high. But what did you? Yes, you, sitting there at your computer slash iPad slash phone slash whatever you're watching this on. What did you think of this week's episode? And let me ask you this. Do you think Missy's being genuine? Do you think she had something to do with the TARDIS malfunctioning? Let me know in the comments section below, as well as telling me what it is you thought of this episode overall, your own mini review, and, you know, the usual sort of trolling crap that people do. Uh, when are you going to do more Doctor Who videos? You know, things like that. Yeah, I read them all. 
even though my therapist tells me not to. Anyway, if you're new to my channel, please do hit subscribe for more videos and keep up to date with all my latest news and reviews by liking my Facebook page and following me on Twitter as well. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, goodbye.